Welcome back to DHN. I wanted to give you an update on trade finance. If you're holding XDC, this is an industry you need to keep your eyes on. In this video, we're going to cover two different narratives. One, the UK Electronic Trade Documents Act. The second narrative we're going to be following is MLETR. There is a list of nations that are now going public with information related to incorporating those initiatives into their trade finance industries. The reason why this is important is because for XDC to be adopted, we need this industry to start picking up steam. And with the UK making that law, that's exactly what we're seeing. So we're going to start with what is MLETR. It aims to bridge the gap in trade digitization by addressing transferable documents and instruments such as bills of lading, warehouse receipts, promissory notes, and so much more historically. Relying on paper-based processes, these documents require legal adaptation to ensure equivalence with electronic alternatives. The MLETR is a model law that provides these needed applications. What MLETR makes possible is for companies to have an alternative or completely remove the paper-based processes for their trade. Let me use an example like Walmart. Walmart, they place an order with their suppliers over in Dubai. That order is often printed out, put on a packing slip, put on a truck, transport it to an airplane, then that airplane takes it, then drops it off in Dubai, which probably drops it off at another truck. The chances of that piece of paper being damaged, being tampered with, being stolen is very likely. The alternative, and this is what MLETR is looking to bring about, Walmart places that same order However, the packing slip is digitized. So that means the moment that that order is placed in Dubai, the supplier already has the shipping information. When the product does show up, if there's anything that doesn't match up with that list, we know there's a problem. That means that we can address it quickly. That is what the benefit is going to be. Trust me, you'll start to see this around the holiday season shopping. When that starts to speed up, that's when you'll notice a change. Now, let's keep going. So countries that have already adopted the MLETR, we got a small list, Papua New Guinea, Belize, Kiribati, Bahrain, Paraguay, the Abu Dhabi global market, and Singapore. That's where XDC is based. So you know anything that Singapore is going to put forth MLETR, XDC has to be in that conversation. Now, I know what you're thinking. Where does it state the use of blockchain and DLT in any of this? Well, see, that's the most interesting part. It doesn't. That's a good thing. I'm going to tell you why. It doesn't put any pressure on companies to rush into the new technology. As a matter of fact, in the ETDA, I love how they worded. They simply are looking for a reliable system. Key requirement for an electronic trade document under the ETDA is that it should have been issued using a reliable system. While the ETDA does not outline specific requirements for an electronic trade document system, it does provide a non-exhaustive list of factors that courts may take into account when assessing the reliability of a particular system. They keep it very straightforward. If you can produce a system that does not allow the document to be tampered at any point in travel, then you're considered reliable. XDC has a number of those. And they also have a number of relationships that apply to the next side of this. This approach allows for the development of industry standards for such systems, with several emerging industry standards already being pointed out, including the Digital Container Shipping Association standards for e-bills of laden, the ICC's Digital Standards Initiative. That's the one that XDC is a part of. So the ICC, International Chamber of Commerce, is a widespread organization and they really have a lot of pool in the industry so what they say carries weight no pun intended but these standards aim to create a single universal set of rules for the digitization of international trade ensuring the reliability of electronic trade document systems so you can now look at xdc as the same way you do with quant and their iso standards the tc307 XDC with their relationships with these organizations are doing the same thing for trade finance. Again, the product of a first mover, 
all right? And I read an interesting post on social media that put the Morpheus network right next to XDC. And that's very interesting because Morpheus has a market in the US and you'll see in a second when we get to the G7 nations, through their banking partnerships, they could give them some leverage. I would be interested in doing a comparison between XGC and Morpheus Network. I think a couple of you asked for that in the past, but let's talk about the list of nations that are getting involved next, starting with the United States. So the legislation enabling the use of most transferable documents is already in place. However, specific documents like bills of laden still require further application. So they're still in the legislation process. And you guys know how things go over here. We just had a bunch of drama about the Speaker of the House. We have a new one, but nobody knows where he stands on anything. So that could probably slow things down a bit. Germany is in much the same situation. They are now considering the option of adopting MLETR through the implementation of regulations. France is anticipated to release a white paper that addresses both the legal and business aspects of MLETR. What's interesting about that white paper is that analysts are suggesting it could be a game changer for the countries that have similar legal systems to France, such as Italy, Spain, and Latin America. So talk about a ripple effect, right? India very important country this year within the framework of the G20 has expressed preliminary interest in MLETR adoption, though it remains in the early stages. So what's interesting about India is that XTC has done a lot of work there. They're also the presidency, well, they were the presidency for the G20 this year. And their main focus was crypto regulation on a global scale. And as a matter of fact, the IMF and the FSB essentially in forced their framework this week. Over the next two years, we are about to get regulated. Hey, I'm just letting you know, you heard it here first. So after France, after India, we have China, all right? Now China, it's very interesting. In collaboration with the Asian Development Bank, they demonstrate a strong interest in MLETR. The ADB actively supports MLETR considerations with ongoing initiatives in China and Georgia. Now, I follow a lot of foreign news media outlets and just based on what they're saying that belt and road initiative is picking up steam and if you don't think that they plan on digitizing everything involved this would be perfect for them because if you don't know anything about it the belt and road is supposed to be this huge infrastructure project that connects multiple nations they would need a digital process to transact trade it would only make sense as a matter of fact they have a blockchain services network out there that whole purpose of creating the network was to provide a digital infrastructure for the Belt and Road. All right, like I said, uh, I have a video covering the subject, might need an update, but let's finish this out here because Japan, and this is another big one, also is interested in MLETR. They have a study group dedicated to the exploration, to exploring the application of MLETR to bills of laden and already possess laws based on different principles for electronic promissory notes. Why is Japan so important? Well, SBI VC trade, SBI holdings in general, they have a foothold in the crypto space. The relationship with SBI VC trade is pretty much bringing the XDC network into Japan's trade finance industry. And Japan is going full steam ahead with DLT, tokenization, NFTs, stable coins, everything. I have a theory, not going to get into it now, but I think Japan knows when to time the market. So through the relationship that XDC has with SBI VC trade, Japan being very forward thinking when it comes to MLETR, again, XDC has the advantage being associated, incorporated into the largest company over there. I'm just saying. Now, the last piece of this puzzle, and I find it funny how it always boils back down to those SDG goals, all right? So, of course, if you remove paper from the process, you're gonna save some trees. You're gonna save a lot of trees. And yes, this initiative does fall in line with the sustainable development goals centered at the environment, Agenda 2030, whatever you want to call it. According to the UK government, they estimate that trade industry uses 28 and a half billion paper documents a year. If these initiatives go through, 
they could be saving two and a two eight million trees per year. So I like trees. I think that's a good thing to see. But I want to know your thoughts on this. How far away are we from a world completely digitized by XDC? Let me know down in the comments. With that, I'm Wade Teamer. Have a great day. Have a prosperous day. I'll see you in the next one.